Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Kayfabe Tober is upon us, and these are your drawing prompts for the year 2023. Make sure you tag us and at us and share your uh, hard work online. We'll uh, reshare as many of these as possible. We're a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos in our filmography. Go take a good search on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel. Hit the magnifying glass. Search for your favorite comics and uh, check out those episodes if you haven't seen them. We have a Patreon uh, that is supported by the King Kayfabers, who, at the highest level, uh, get all of these videos before anybody else, and they're hanging out with us right now in uh, a live stream recording session as we produce these videos. Uh, this is one of those episodes that will be Kayfabe affected to some extent uh, as we get into the University of Mississippi Press Conversations series for cartoonists. Uh, and right before you see a bunch of good names right there. But uh, you can find some of these books very cheaply on the aftermarkets, your Amazons, your, your Ebays. Uh, but it's the King Kayfabers who are getting the cheapest, you know, the $3 copy of Robert Crumb Conversations while you have to pay $40 if you are not hip to this. Uh, so, Jimmy, I don't know how how, uh, how early you get into the game, but I didn't know about Conversations until the uh, the Dan Clowes one came out. That, that That's the one that was on my radar. Yeah, it makes total sense. And you see Ken Perrell is one of the editors on there. Uh, you could find writings from him on Comics Journal, uh, maybe in Comic Art, too. He's written a lot about Clowes, so it makes yeah. sense that he'd be an editor. Uh, I follow him on, on X and uh, often posts really cool panels and things like that. So a good choice for this. Uh, but this comes right out of what I'm saying. There is this is legit coming out of comics. Yeah, right, right. Well, what it, what is funny though is like you can tell that like the content is so much more important than like the graphic design of the covers because that might be Comic Sans, man. <laughs> just That's a, funny. Just the shittiest. By the way, Kniff, that was my first entry point, and nice. I found it at a uh, half price books, you know, and and just picked it up because it looked interesting to me. I of course knew Kniff, but it's a chance to the, these things were huge, you know, like. For me, finding interviews with a cartoonist, especially this in depth, how else do I know how to make comics? Right. You know, like this stuff was just like manna from heaven. It runs the gamut as well. Uh, so you see uh, what we have right here Alan Moore, Robert Crumb, Chris Ware, Harvey Picar, uh, Milk Kniff, Charles Schultz, Carl Bark, Stan Klaus. If you go to the University of Mississippi Press uh, webpage, there's probably two dozen of these uh, comic book conversations books and it goes up to pretty contemporary times um robert kirkman conversations jeff lemire i think there might be a matt kent one so uh it's something that keeps going on and uh has been going on for for uh since the kind of graphic novel boom uh i'm guessing uh there's a format to these uh that sort of makes it the uh part of the conversation series and uh one of the one of my favorite pieces of the, each of these books is that uh, we get... Is this one not going to have it? Uh, we have chronologies. So that's just a great way to kind of start things off by giving uh, a very direct line, giving great context to uh, important dates in the uh, cartoonist's career. And uh, you, from these chronologies alone, you may learn a lot about uh, the cartoonist's that you dig. This video is brought to you by the books that we make. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is my next release from Image Comics. This will be in comic book shops late November. You need to pre-order that one now. It collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadliest Girl alive. I am self-publishing and will be selling these on jimrug.com in late October, October 26th. These go on sale. True Crime Funnies, three non-fiction stories, 1986 zine celebrating the biggest year in comics history, and BW, a collection of black and white explosion and self-published titles from the 80s. And Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design history, is uh, basically sold out. So pick that one up if you haven't already added it and your short store still has a copy, you want to grab that. Ed Piscor's Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree, plus 140 extra pages, is now in finer bookstores and comic shops everywhere in one beautiful volume. Add that to your shelf before it's too late. X-Men Grand Design, the trilogy, collecting all three volumes of X-Men Grand Design, will be coming to comic shops in late November. Pre-order that one now. 
And finally, Ed Piscor's Red Room, Trigger Warnings, and the Antisocial Network are both available wherever you buy books or comics. And a third volume, Crypto Killers, will be out in January. And now back to the video. And then when we get into the body of the proper book, uh, all interviews are in chronological order. So beginning from the earliest interviews up to uh, the you know the latest ones that they have rights and access to. So it paints a, a pretty fantastic portrait of the artist. And one of the things that I always enjoy is to see uh, is to see them kind of forming their ideas a little bit more. And maybe even, uh, some would call it hypocritical, but changing their points of view as their careers go on and as they sort of like learn more and more about uh, the form. So it's, how could it, it be any other way? If you're if you're lucky and you're not you know stubborn and rigid, like it, it that is the way. Well, the flip side is even if you uh, are opposed to personal growth memory will become a factor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like you're probably going to get a bunch of range just uh, even if it's not intentional over the course of time. I love these interviews that go like older, you know, like before there was really any language around totally. comics, uh, you know, like that Carl Barks one. Interesting. I think that first one was 62. Is he done drawing the ducks at that point? Like when does he, yeah, you know what I mean? It's amazing to think like that would almost be a career overview, even though we think of that as like the early interview in this collection. Yeah, totally. It's, it's really interesting too, because it's, he's just, there's there's a whole introduction to just describe how we even get to know Carl Barks' name. Yes. So, uh, you know, it's around the start of, like, Marvel Comics, like, 61, when people start to make the connection that the good duck artist is this guy, Carl Barks. It was mentioned in one of the Dale comics, like, in, like very dashed out, like, just... Uh, just a quick mention in like one comic and that that sort of set things off and then there were people that didn't live far away like like Glenn Bray who didn't live far away from Carl Burks we were able to look him up in the book and are you the guy uh, he was very gracious with his correspondence and stuff so these earliest interviews well this is pretty great because it's Don and Maggie Thompson uh, doing you know the first big thing and these uh, zines and things you know, Comic Art 7, there might have been 50 copies of that. But the Barks fans are so deep that they go for for everything. Like, like I was talking to a guy at Baltimore Comic Con. I bought it off the dude, Kim, Kim Weston, I believe is his name. Uh, and he, Kim, created a, uh, he sort of touched up a piece of Barks art that was unpublished, except for it showed up at about a half inch scale in an ad in an old Dell comic. So he blew it up and retouched it up to try to ink it and, and you color it using the, the Barks palette. And then he had this kind of like zip tone for the shape of the finger that would have been like Donald Duck's finger and then drew through it to try to like show you what maybe it would have looked like using, you know, his best, best approximation of Carl Barks. Art, yeah, that's why. But with a zip tone letting you know that this is not the Barks. Yes. Yeah, that's really fantastic. Yeah. It's deep, man. So with stuff like the uh, Dan Klaus conversations, uh, there are the, the pieces in here where uh, we get into the process, which is fantastic. Dorsey Sullivan, 2002. Um, this is where we get that idea of the 5% rule. Mm -hmm. You know, Comics Journal 250, uh, reprinted with permission. But uh, the 5% rule that was kind of bestowed upon Klaus by Jim Woodring, I believe. And the idea is that... Uh, when you're done, you have to do 5% more uh, in terms of polish to get it to a place where it's beyond everybody else, man. I was literally talking to Natalie about this yesterday in regards to um, a piece of furniture that, that we had somebody build for us. And I was like, you can see the difference here. You know, like this person is not doing that extra 5%. And I kind of explained the whole Klaus thing. But it's such an elevation if you're making comics, for instance – you know, it's such an elevation compared to I got it done in time by the deadline. Right. Versus I had a running list of things that I wanted to make sure I would go back to or think about while I'm finishing or if I had time. That 5%, it's amazing to put into your brain and think that way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Crumb stuff is fascinating because I think the first one is in 68. So he's kind of like a folk hero locally he's a he's a he's a local guy uh the the earliest stuff that they're talking about 
in the the earliest interviews is uh, there's there's one store that is the distributor for uh, Moe's Bookstore on Telegraph Ave is the distributor for Zap Comics and Snatch and a couple little things, and they're dealing with litigation right now. So uh, all those comics were were pulled off the off the stands. Uh, this is, you know, in the Berkeley Barb, so that's your, your free weekly that I think has persisted. I, I, I know that, uh, remember the Sharon Lintz that we drew that Pornhounds comic? Like, she worked for the Berkeley Barb. Uh, so, Crumb is a phenomenon of sorts, but he's not, he's not worldwide yet. But then you get to the next one from, like, 72, and there are fine artists who, uh, who have, like come to America, discover crumb, and then are not like doing crumb. Like the meatball curtain is like a piece of fine art that is done after these guys come. So like in just a very short amount of time, uh, you know, crumb crumb is getting bigger and bigger. And this is like Cleveland Magazine. So he's still kind of like a small becomes a cult classic kind of kind of folk artist, and then things blow the fuck up for for him. That would be one I'd be really interested in for that time reason. Like, like that's a big piece. And then, you know, what you realize, like, uh, the Berkeley Barb, it's like a reporter is talking to him. It's not necessarily like now whenever we get a comics journal interview with somebody where it's like, okay, a comics nerd is talking to him. Not at all. This right. is almost like maybe it's an arts reporter, maybe, who knows, culture reporter, whatever. But the survey is totally different as to what how they're contextualizing it and having that conversation. Even for Crumb, it's not like I'm sure he was dealing with a bunch of comic book nerds regularly that were doing fanzines about comics like it would have been a much different conversation than what you get now but we'll take it to the furthest extreme with the charles schultz stuff because it, throughout most of these uh interview books it was the journal or comics interview david allen craft or whatever when it comes to charles schultz first off he hits the ground running and all of the interviews uh are coming from places like saturday evening post new yorker New York Times, like all of the biggest possible venues with the uh, most substantial in this book is the Gary Groth interview that spans, look at that, almost 100 pages. Yeah, I think that's, wow, that's interesting because that's probably that Comics Journal 200, I bet. It is. Or it might be multiple Comics Journal conversations. It's the one. More than one. Um, but it also might be like an unabridged one or something because that many pages, man. I don't remember the Comics Journal interview being quite that long. Right. I guess it's formatted differently, too. That's fascinating, though. Uh, just having different types of interviewers, I think, is a really interesting feature in these books. Absolutely. Bill Watterson at the very end. So uh, that, that's that's a pretty sharp conversation to have. Yeah. L- L.A. Times, December 21st, 1999. So, so we're moving up towards the retirement, where I, I believe Watterson might have already been retired uh, at that point. I think that's so, right. So we have two uh, retired cartoonists speaking to one another. That, that's uh, Well, I, I guess it's more of an afterword. Uh, kind of piece in the Alan Moore piece. It starts out very, very early in his career. He might even still be doing stuff for like Marvel UK, and is making fun of uh, Chris Claremont writing style and Frank Miller. Like, really, is like cold dissing Frank Miller. But he's talking about how much he loves Marvel Man and has an idea for a treatment of Marvel Man. And goddamn it, if that doesn't come to uh, fruition, that's one of the fun things with old interviews. Totally. Uh, your, your your humble host has a uh, cameo appearance in uh, in this uh, Harvey Harvey P car. That Harvey P car cover is amazing. Conversations book. Yeah, it's <laughs> such a perfect picture for him. <laughs> totally, uh, because somewhere in the early two thousands, uh, we captured a, a, a uh, where is it? Yeah, be this Michael Rohde piece. Uh, who is the curator of this thing, man? It was uh, SPX 2005. That's the uh, that's the first panel I was ever on. Wow. And it was with Harvey P. Carr, uh, Dean Haspel, and uh, Josh Newfeld. So we get a little bit of a uh, little bit of coverage, man. We get a little. Oh yeah, this is fun because Josh Newfeld drew the cover for SPX that year, and this is when the Harvey P. Carr. The American Splinter movie came out, and one of the promotional pieces was a little head bob bobble uh, of Harvey. So Josh Newfeld <laughs> drew this, and he he drew us. That's cool. As uh, little head bobbles that are on top of all the books that we've drawn for Harv. So there's a little Eddie P right there. 
Yeah, nice. The Chris Ware one's a new wish to me. Uh, so, so I haven't gotten too deep. But uh, the first interviews of all of them are great because it's it's uh, you know there's no media training to. Uh, and you can see I have my like little places yes. where where, uh, where where I stopped with with each of these so far. Uh, so this one's from '93. That's very early in his career. Uh, it might be right around the time of uh, Acme Novelty One, and uh, we we get a pretty interesting impression of of Chris Ware from the start. There's still the self-effacing stuff, but he hasn't solidified that character that much. But um, it's also clear that he has very strong ideas about the medium of comics and stuff and, and uh, uh you know he hits the ground running with the his his sort of meditations on on the forum so uh i know that there's a seth one i don't have that uh and uh jeet here said that uh that that's one of the great ones yeah that makes sense there's a will eisner conversations i don't have that one i would bet that that's pretty good but uh that that one i online it was you know, all of these things I got, got got for a song, you know, a couple of dollars. But the, the Eisner one, you can't find that for, like, less than 30 Sometimes I feel bad whenever we look at something and it blows up the price. But the flip side is that means people didn't know this existed. Totally. And these are fantastic. I love seeing the post-it notes, too, at different places because it's kind of how to read something like this. Totally. You know, like, what mood are you in or what did you leave off with last night? And, you know, you jump around. You kind of find the stuff that you need as you go through them. Um, pretty interesting collection. Uh, I'll be curious to see this collection continue to grow, like like picking up the Seth piece or maybe finding a good deal on an Eisner piece. Um, something that I'll go into and kind of look through too, what all's available, maybe fill in uh, opposite gaps <laughs> that we can pass books back and forth. There was a K Faber that sent in a Frank Miller book from like 1986, and it's a it has three interviews in it, and they're from different eras. It's the same setup as this. Mm -hmm. And the first one is early 80s, I want to say, or late 70s, and Carol Kalish is the interviewer, the mm. uh, the the short time marvel direct sales kind of sales liaison person um very highly regarded but passed away very young uh so i found that pretty interesting i've been going through that this week but it feels like it's right in line with this because you've got a young cartoonist i'm sure now if frank went and revisited that he'd have totally different ideas on all of it but that's the value of having a survey of like these are interviews from 30 years 40 years you know across a career yeah so uh, the inspiration for this video is this Carl Barks conversations book because I, I, I didn't really know that it was that broad of a series. You know, I would find some of these books, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, I thought that there was maybe just a couple of them, and I thought that they happened a, a, a long time ago. And uh, when I saw the Carl Barks, I'm like, investigated a little bit deeper, and was like, wow, there's really way more of these than, than I realized. So then I had to scoop up uh, really quickly before we do the video. Uh, some of the other ones that I want to get to Im immediately, uh, you know, the Schultz, the Crumb, the Wear, and the Kniff, because, you know, I'm in that uh, comic strip headspace. Uh, but wanted to make it aware to uh, the, the kayfabe audience out there that there are these, it, it, talk about an embarrassment of riches, uh, there are a couple dozen fantastic books curating interviews with all of uh you know comics most important creators there's a spiegelman one it's more of, of this kind of format i would hope that they graduated from this to this because this is this like uh you could tell that academics came up with that it looks like a goddamn classroom powerpoint front page or something i like to imagine whenever it was time to do the chris ware one chris ware being like we're not doing that cover. <laughs> There's no way you're putting my name in that font. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Just the shittiest thing ever. That's so funny. But it speaks to the kind of enthusiasm, right? Like, like it's the contents that matter, and then you just kind of shit this out. But at least this is a little bit more classy. The, uh, you know, this period is a little more classy. Yeah, it's so interesting because you can almost imagine, like, these are these are evolutions, right? Like, Like, this is probably... The Schultz, the Kniff, maybe the first go around. Totally. And then it's like, let's put a little better photo on. You know, you get like these full bleed photos then and stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's interesting. That's, I guess, academia. Yeah. Kniff really does look like the Martin Landau, uh, Bela Lugosi from the Ed Wood movie. <laughs> Doesn't he look like he's ready he does. to suck your blood? He's got that gaze. Yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny pick. <laughs> Good to go. Gay favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Kayfabe-tober is still upon us. These are your prompts for your for your drawings this uh, season. Make sure you add us, make sure you tag us in those images, make sure we see those images, and we are going to uh, share and we retweet as many of these uh, as possible.
The videos are brought to you uh, in part by the patrons. Uh, the King Kayfabers on the Patreon get all the videos before anybody else, thus mitigating the Kayfabe effect. We are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos at your disposal. We might have talked about some of your favorites. So hit the search field in uh, the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Search for your favorite comics. Check out those episodes. But if we didn't cover your favorite comics, you have to let us know what those comics are so that we can push those uh, titles a little bit higher up on our to-read pile. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Jim Rugg and myself, we are uh, working and functioning cartoonists. This is a healthy blend of our bibliography right now, but we're making stuff all the time. And that time is now. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out in stores. Make sure you scoop this sucker up, man. It's the best book I ever made, collecting all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree inside of one handy gold foil hardcover with a bunch of new material so even if you got those original volumes there's plenty enough here to justify your purchase x-men grand design trilogy trade paperback is coming to you in november collecting all of my x-men grand design works and uh, some of those volumes are out of print as we speak i'm serializing a daily strip uh that uh is going to be coming out January 1st, 2024. It's called Switchblade Shorties. But if you are on my Patreon, you're going to get early access to uh, those strips. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining the Patreon. I uh, received a whole bunch of feedback uh, in the past uh, week or two. I put out new strips every Tuesday for uh, the early adopters to enjoy. Red Room has been the focus for the past couple of years. Uh, there are two trade paperbacks out there, The Anti-Social Network and Trigger Warnings. These are self-contained. Uh, these each contain four self-contained stories, so it doesn't matter which one you read first. But there's going to be a, a third volume called Crypto Killers coming out in January that I want to let you guys know about. Man, save 20 bucks from your uh, Christmas and Hanukkah loot and scoop up the uh, Red Room Crypto Killers trade paperback. Jimmy, what do you got on the horizon? Street Angel, Princess of Poverty is my next book coming out from Image Comics. It'll be out in November. You need to pre-order it now at your local comic shop or wherever you buy books or comics. It collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadly Girl Alive, which is also from Image Comics. They'll make a really nice set on your shelf together. And uh, there's no overlap between the two books. So pick them both up. You'll have all the Street Angel comics. A Hulk Grand Design. This is my contribution to the Grand Design Marvel project. And uh, I believe it's out of print. So if you haven't added it to your shelf already, these copies are disappearing fast. Pick one up while you still can because once it's out of print, no guarantee that it is going to be reprinted anytime soon. And finally, I've been self-publishing lately. True Crime Funnies, three nonfiction stories in there, including two wrestling yarns, the 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history, and the BW zine celebrating the black and white explosion in self-publishing comics and oddities from the 80s and 90s that I love so much. Those are all going to be available on my website, jimrug.com, October 26th. I do have big quantities, but that is like my holiday fall sale. So if you want to add any of these books to your collection, that is the place to get them, October 26th, jimrug.com. It's imperative that you guys kayfabe affect the books because that keeps uh, the lights on in the uh, the studios. But there are some ways to uh, directly support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, stickers, and more from our spread shop. That link is also under this video in the show notes. There you have it. Several ways to keep these videos coming to you on a regular basis. Uh, without further ado, Jimmy, please give the people their marching orders and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.